So, uh, welcome to Christmas Hobby Blog, and today I'm here to tell you how I got one of these for £31. Plus postage. So, yes. Um, this is the take take three, actually, really, of this. Uh, not the video, the attempt to get one of these. This is one of the Rapido Trains UK Western Region 15XX Penny Tanks. Um, this came from Kent Garden Railways. Um... Yes, very clickbaity title, and okay, how do I get one of these from Kate Garvey Rose for £31? Unfortunately, or, for, or fortunately, depending on how you look at this story, I'm going about to tell. Um, yes, not y y you won't be able to. <laughs> Circumstances have allowed me to. Um, yes, so it's not any sort of special deal with me and Kate Garden Railways. Um, this is just how it panned out. Now, I haven't actually tested this. The idea is I'm going to test this quickly i did ask if it was tested for the scent for the wobble problem um it's been ticked off on there so hopefully it's been tested it's fine so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to do what's not recommended as such which is to give a quick test for the battery the nylon battery and then actually chip it pretty quickly i've got some chips from hatton's some one of their as i closing our sale i got some of the eight pound 50 chips fit next 18 to go it's what this needs um and get it running up and down and just see it for myself on the on the lab, which obviously is DCC. Uh, in April, I don't want to go messing around with that. Now, some great news is I've put the order in for the track. Uh, I have actually got a number of locos. I've got a special video to film after this, which is an, a look at video. I've actually got some other look at videos to do um, as well. Because I'm starting to run out. You know, we're nearly a year ago filming all of them, the ones that come out so far, and this will be the first. Uh, this is the first ones I'm having to film now. Um, I think we're still good for a few weeks yet, though. There's still more yet. <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so yes, yeah, quite a lot happening on the layout. So I've got some flux coming tomorrow. Um, I have ordered the lining for the J94, so I'm doing up from the IKEA one. There'll be a whole little video about that. Um, I've got some great western green paint coming. Not for this, but for the Dean Goods, the ROD Loco, uh, and and the special look at. Which I'm not sure to put into the series, or just to bump the series around a bit, so I'll put whatever's meant to be next week, next Monday, on the following week. Uh, or onto the end, and then put this as next Monday's one because it's only what, five days away uh, but yes anyway so the one of these I've got you I'm sure you're eager to know this is there's all the details there it's a different one to the one I got last time I didn't think I was going to get this this is uh, lined black early and as preserved this is 1501 um, I think there's one left at the time of recording up there so just quickly show you also it has some glare again because of the uh, oh boy that's 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 a pretty thing so i am noticing one issue straight away which is a very good buffer but uh see there okay but do you know what at this point if it runs without the wobble if the wobble is only as bad as the first one i'm just going to keep it regardless uh, because we're not sh there's no guarantee of course that we're going to get a second run of these we might do i hope we do it'd be awesome i don't know one way or the other for, for definite or anything but it's just you know thinking about like the plant industrials victory there's been a run of those i don't know if they're still making them or not but there's been sort of it all gone quietly on that front so yeah you don't know about these or not depends because most people have probably wanted one i've got one now so yes yeah, so i'm going to get this out of the box and get it tested um, and you'll see it running on camera in a bit, but first I just want to go into a little bit of how I got this for the money I did. And that is basically, so you remember the saga of the 1361, that 40 minute long video, and this one's going to be nothing near that. Um, so don't you worry, if it does start to get there, I'll refilm it. Um, but basically, I'm going to put a buy beware out there, um, which is why I wanted the clickbaity type title, because um yeah uh buyer beware on olivia's emporium this is the second hand part of olivia's trains so much like you've got clark's 
Um, and then you've got Clark's Railworks. The Railworks is the second hand department of, of Clark's Trains, or uh, it's Clark Trains. Um, this is the second hand department apparently for Olivia's Trains. The digging I did there. Um, yeah, basically, obviously, the second one didn't work properly. Just buy that card, as explained beforehand. But yeah, the, the first one didn't work. Horrid burning smell. Basically, I'll give a quick synopsis here in case you haven't watched that stupid long video. Um, and after running in, it, the motor mechanism just jammed. Uh, it was like, oh, it smelled like burnt antiseptic. And that's the smell, is, but it's, but say it's burnt antiseptic. And not smelled like anything before like that. It's really, really weird. Anyway, I arranged a return for eBay. Um, seller had till. Um, I can't remember the dates exactly now, but so they had a particular time frame with it, with it to get me a, a label, a return label sent. Uh, it clocked over, I was talking to someone actually past like past midnight that night. Um, no on, on, on the last day, so I was thinking, well, okay, this, this is now going to go into eBay's hands. And about 10 minutes later, it said all the label, labels being dispatched, uh, issued to you. I couldn't find it to download it. Uh, okay, I'll look at this in the morning. So, no, nothing there. And then I get a message from the seller saying, can you ring me on this number? Gave me a mobile number. Um, there's, been, there's been a bit of an issue, whatever. And suspicions were starting to raise how it was five, ten minutes past on the final day before anything got said. Because I was then given the reason that, oh, because your email address is a .com and mine is a .co.uk, you're all mouthing in different countries. I've never had this issue. I mean, I want, you know me, I want to think from friggin' Japan. I've never had an issue with this before. So they won't let me do the returns they will. Right, okay. But anyway, giving them the benefit of the doubt, he said he'd be on the phone to eBay, trying to sort it out. I was like, okay, right. He said, would you actually like one of these? So I said, yes, please. Uh, that's why I brought it, you know. So he said, well, actually do your replacement. So I said, contact. That's where you contact. You thing on the... Um, eBay listing says to contact if there's any cosmetic damage. So a bit like actually like that buffer that's a bit wonky on that one. Not as if it's mechanically, it's a mechanical fault. Anyway, if you got, yeah, okay. So right, I, at my cost, I sent that one back to him. And he did actually send me a replacement. He was said he was going to put the money into, in the box with it to cover that. That didn't happen. Um, but when I when I rang, I was no, no, not notified that the replacement was on its way. Um... It's fortunate that one was tracked so I could see it being delivered. Um, the place on its way, well, it did say I didn't rely the money. Oh, right, right, right. Tried it out. Same antiseptic smell. It's meant to be a replacement, remember? Same burnt antiseptic smell. Yes, it had the card in it. It did nothing. It did absolutely nothing at all. So, because I arrived on a Saturday and this phone line isn't open apart from the order one, which I got no answer on. I did try it, but there's no answer. Um... Yeah, managed to get through on Monday. Was very snappily told, oh, you best send it back for a refund then, because that's a replacement. And so I'm sorry, but I don't think it is a replacement. But yes, I would refund what I was going for now, because this is this is silly. Because they're claiming to take the returned items to Hellion and basically uh, repairing them and reselling them as repaired. I, this was the same loco. It had a bit of detail knocked off since then, but it was the same engine as stink. Unless they're putting all of them in this weird antiseptic bath. The stink of it was incredible. It filled the room. And I had to have the window open for two, three days to actually get rid of it finally. It was vile. But anyway. Um, obviously, because I'd closed the eBay case, because, you know, we'd agreed a replacement one. You can't then reopen one. That includes getting returns able sent through. So I had to ring him again and said, what, what, what do we do? Oh, and well, he was a bit better this time. But he said, oh, you, you, know, you have to send it back the same way before. But get, send it second. Don't do this. And I'll refund you that as well. Okay. So Thursday last week, 9.30 p.m., I get a text message from him. It says, hi, Chris. Already gave my backup because I'm a Christopher. I've always signed off with Christopher as well, you know, so it's not like it's an obvious. But anyway, that's minor. Um, important facts are basically, hi Christopher, uh, hi Chris, you know, the, the, it's, it, it's worked first time when it's arrived back here. Can you just remind me again why you returned it? 
And I felt sick. I honestly felt sick. And I was like, well, you could tell me anything. Like I could tell him anything. I, you could tell me anything. Is what my first thought was. So I just said, so I need to just put back. All I can say is it didn't hear. But the loco that's actually currently under repaint has paint on its wheels, ran fine on the same track. Which says to me, it's not the uh, track, it's not the controller. And after our previous conversation about getting in contact for any problems, rather than mess about with it, I, I contacted you ASAP, which was obviously on Monday morning. If you could please just, and I said to follow up one, there's about 10 minute gaps, and if follow up and say, if you just please press for issue, process the refund, we'll draw a line under it. I still haven't left feedback, even as recording now yet, on this one going to with the buyer beware stuff. Anyway, so I'm noticing that the time is up to 10 minutes, so yeah, not, not a 40 minutes yet, but it, it, needs, it just needs to be said. Um, so an hour or so went by, almost an hour, and I just thought, right, I wonder if I can raise a PayPal case for this, because I know PayPal and eBay are separate these days, so can I raise a PayPal? Yes, I can. It says, do you some like, do you, you, this is an eBay thing, could you deal with it on eBay? And it has an option to click saying, no, continue with PayPal. Um, or I want to continue with PayPal. So I put the, the stuff in for the case, filled it out. It doesn't give you much time, by the way, to actually click submit. So copy and paste that into Word or Notepad or something like that. So if it does time out, you can go and refill it again. Um, I couldn't put it in for more than the amount it was originally. So 105, which included the postage to me initially, but not my other RR returns. But at this point, I'm at a cut my losses thing here. Um, it's about 10 quid's worth of postage overall. So I'm still £10 down now, uh, but I don't expect to ever see that. Um, and I was always narrowing, am I being too hasty? Because I'm always quite blasé with stuff arriving to me. I really am quite relaxed about it. It turns up when it turns up, sort of stuff, you know, that sort of thing. So, like, you know, do I, um, do I hold off a little bit on this? Um... And a, f a friend came online to talk to me, um, we'd arranged anyway, and I said, I'm just, I'm just wondering, because he knew, he knew the saga of this, and he said, no, send it. If he's going to text you at 9.30 at night, in a minute he's got the local and your money, and you're you're not only down the 10 quid, you're down the 105. Okay. So, yeah, I pulled the trigger about half ten, 20 past half ten, um, within about five minutes. The refund was processed. That's 105. So, yeah, I don't. I really have my suspicions because it's very much like that first one when the uh, 10 minutes past um, midnight when the, the label thing came through. I think he'd missed the boat there and was trying to save face with it because he had obviously then locked the account down. He couldn't do anything as a seller. Um. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, at this point. I, I, I At this point, I fully believe that uh, he, he hoped, because I closed the eBay case, that was, that was my last card. So, yes, I'm really am going to say a buy beware. And unlike my previous videos, I'm going to say don't, I don't recommend buying from them. Um, I would hate for anyone to go through this crap that I've been through. Sorry to use some language there, but I can't think of any other way. It's actually quite a mild term in compared to what I do want to use. So yes, so obviously 105 refunded. Well, that was from last month's paycheck. <laughs> so meaning to get to this, it was only another £31 plus the postage for this one. So uh, yeah, I thought well for that, and considering it's, it is 1501, and I do want to start one of my other friends is um, actually doing a Bluebell collection. He, Got a fantastic collection of blue rail locomotives. Um, I thought, well, I need to do the same thing for the Summer Valley. So here we are, 1501, to uh, to start that off. What a magnificent locomotive. So I was saying, I'm going to pop the chip in this now, because this is now a quarter of an hour long here of my waffle. But yeah, I just thought it was really important to put out there. I don't want anyone else to do that. And it kind of interesting, anything I'll say quickly before I, I go away and put the chip in this and cut that buffer and everything, is interesting, isn't it, that one of the things pointed out by train tracks was issues in dealing with the sellers of the in, in, in Japan. Well, Olivia's Emporium is based in Sheffield. Last time I checked, that was in England, actually. Not just the UK, but England itself. And only an hour or two up the motorway from here. 
so um yeah just pointing out i've never had any of this rubbish with any one of these uh japanese models there but uh yeah so we know we know not to use them now so let's go and play trains and next thing you'll see hopefully is this running on there and me going thumbs up i'll get that buffer fixed i'm going to say there is another one at the time of recording so if it is too badly gone or there's anything else wrong with it i'll have to contact ken garden rams and get it sorted out and hopefully we'll have another palaver <sighs> We hope. No, I brought King Garden Rams past. They've always been very good. Anyway, right. Say so not sponsor or anything like that. Right, I'll see you in a moment. So, after quite a while actually, I think getting this sorted out, there's a lot of bits you can knock off so easy on this. I've had to do some repair work. The buffer popped back into place absolutely fine. But one of the steps was loose and actually came away. Um, and I don't know what it is, it's like a little. Um, looks like a tap on the front of the smoke box and again that that came when this is all trying to get the um body off to put the decoder in it's been a bit of a faff and i think if this ever gets salvaged i'm sending it away for something else to do uh because i don't know if i can go through all that again <laughs> but uh, i don't know if i will actually now i seem to have lost with the decoder initially in the light came on the firebox light came on I managed to turn it off with the headlight button, but I can't seem to get that to come on again, but I'm not too fussed about that. It's now fitted, it's all programmed, and without much further ado, let's bring it past. And welcome 1501 into service, as you can see. There may be a slight wobble, but I do not care now. I don't care. So we'll put that in up there. And obviously, just a once out and back with four wagons shouldn't hurt it. Um, I'm not putting, as the instructions say, don't try and pull 40 wagons up a steep incline. No, I think four should, should, should be fine just to do a little demonstration at the end of this video. Just to uh, say, but it's quite interesting that this is, in theory, it's a replacement for my original, but in more recent stuff, obviously, it's a replacement for the. Um, um, Solar tank, which is quite interesting. <laughs> We've gone from one of the smallest of a Great Western engine to one, to one of the biggest in tank engine terms. I'm not sure if we've got those lots, but we'll try pulling away. No, we haven't. Okay, so let's just see that couple of nose up. Yeah, not actually far off. But here we are. So take it away, 1501. Do more than your sibling ever did. I never got to pull a train with that. And the brake valve repeater at the end, so that's kind of nice, isn't it? So we're doing out and back. So yes, thank you for watching and hearing the tale of how I got a Rapido 15XX for £31. I think now I can now draw a line under the whole affair. And obviously that pannier does need running in now. Um, I will to give you a shot of it uh, coming towards the camera so you can see the front end as well. Okay. So yeah, just turned it round so you can see it running towards the camera as well. So you consider it's not been running yet, it's a very smooth, quiet runner. Will admit though, because it's been a similar sort of experience fitting the uh, the sixteen hundred was a bit of a ordeal fitting out with DCC. So I do wonder if um, it's not better when buying these just to say, yeah, can you fit this with a chip for me? If you're not buying one of the sound ones, it'd be nice if they did uh, what would Dapol do and actually. There, I'll speed step one. Uh, and actually um, did a DC or an analog version, um, a DC fitted version, and um, the sound one, so you can actually kind 
because it's requiring me to go to Theatre 2 to get that movie, but hey ho, hopefully that should be roughly in focus. There we are. Um, so you can just buy one straight in the box with, with DC, DCC already on board if, if, if you wanted that no sound. But uh, yes, the only thing I've, I've noticed, as I say, it's this bit that came off here. Uh, we've got a pointy thing. Uh, come on. There we are. So yeah, this gold piece that came off here. Um, but to get the to get the body off, it's two screws under the cab here. You've got to take the filler caps off both sides and the screws under there come out. But this also came away whilst I was doing that. <laughs> it's all a bit of a path. It, it's very breakable. That's one thing I will say about this loco, it's very breakable. Fortunately now, all I've got to do handling-wise is touch the tanks. Tanks into the box, tanks out of the box. Once it's on the track, leave it alone as much as possible. Um, this coupling's going to need attention. It's drooping a lot more than I'd like. Uh, but that should be easily replaced with another dem socket with the, with, the, with the original coupling. You should do that, I think. But for now, it's running. I'm, I'm super happy with it. I'm much happier with it than I was the um, NCB liveried one uh, that I had before, the two I had before. And thank you again to Rails for sorting that out for me. Difference in customer service, so two different Sheffield shops. Um, but uh, yes, so now, now obviously once this has been running, it will be operating as normal. So yes, once the tracks or arrives. Now I've ordered it through Rainbow Railways, um, and they they said it's a two to three week thing. I did look at Lipper, um, but also I was concerned about the import charges there. A minute um because the prices are very good from lipper incredibly good from lipper actually to be honest with you um but yeah and that's just a turn out for here where the tactical area is sitting the a proper straight section to replace the equivalent length there and then proper parts for where the the big the big turnouts come off the big come off the big points here so the proper parts to go in there in fact, that is one, but there's one to the left there. But yeah, just to allow to actually uh, get trains running. So basically, I'll have a my staging yard, which is still an American term I'm going to use, because I've got to put it to fill the yard, to be honest with you. The staging yard on the left, I'll have enough track for that. The working runaround, and with the siding here, the runaround would be able to be used as part of a big England look. Now, I do have three wagons arrived from Dapol later this month, Looking forward to those immensely. Only eleven quid each. I thought, why not? It's a decent. It's a really good price. And they're all decorated actually for motorcycle companies from the UK, uh, from the local area actually. So we've got Triumph, Ariel, and Norton, and they're all fantastic for it because much like the Pro Owner wagon you see there, W H Wallace, it's you know really obvious, you know, nice difference between the, between the three. So so yeah, I thought that'd be cool. So hopefully we can get to see all this come together with fifteen oh one here. Doing the honour of shunting the layout. Now, obviously, this engine is more intended for my later layout, highly unlikely, as part of the heritage fleet, but highly likely this motor going to be run initially, especially during the Great Western period, um, just because a lot of people are getting seven valley collections together at the minute. But um, yeah. But yeah, so anyway, we got there. We got there. We got a, a silk purse out of a sales here, as it were. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all in another video. Thank you for watching. Take care, stay safe and be well, and yeah, uh, bye for now.